In this video, I'll be explaining the accruals concept. So accruals means uh, even though you haven't received cash or you haven't paid cash, but you have to recognize some asset or liabilities. So let's see how it works. So for example, a business sells goods to customers and then customer receives it. If the customer receives our goods, what we should do is to recognize revenue. But because the customer hasn't paid us the cash yet, because the customer will agree to pay at some point in the future, for example, in 20 days' time. But at the time that the customer receives our goods, we need to recognize revenue. And at the same time, we recognize the account receivables. Because this is according to the accruals concept. Accruals concept means you've settled your obligation already because we sign a contract with the customer. I will provide goods to the customer. I've got my obligations. I have to provide goods. I have to make the goods and provide them to you. I've finished my obligations on my side. You receive it. You receive it. Okay, you receive my goods. I fulfilled my obligations. Because I fulfilled my obligations, I've got right to recognize those revenue. In order to use that revenue to cover my costs of making that product to calculate the profit. And this is what I mean by accruals. Accruals means I've got liability, I've got obligations, I've finished my obligations already, I've got right to recognize the future revenue or the future cash in and therefore I fulfilled my obligations, I've got right to recognize my assets which means the uh, account receivables which means I've got my obligations, I fulfill it, I incur costs already and then I've got right to recognize revenue and then I use the revenue to subtract costs and that will leave us profit. So accruals concept is used in order to show the true or the real profit for the business and that's it. Accruals means showing the real profit of a business by recognizing the revenue as well as the corresponding expenses correctly. Now other examples related to accruals concept for example I owe certain money to the supplier providing us with the goods or services or electricity, uh, or electricity services. But I should pay $100, but the invoice is due. The amount of $100 that I haven't paid yet. Since I haven't paid yet, the cash is not reduced. But according to accruals concept, we have to provide for the corresponding expenses as well as the liability. To show the true picture, of using that electricity or using that goods provided by the, uh, by the supplier to uh, start our production process to uh, earn the revenue because we've got the revenue I've got the obligation to provide for the corresponding expenses as well so the true profit uh, can be presented next example depreciation expenses depreciation expense is just to be the accounting term showing how many years that you've used your asset, no more than that. It does not really reflect the asset value decreases or the asset impairs, no. Accounting depreciation simply means you've bought the asset at the start for $100, for example, the asset can be used for 10 years. So in substance, you're spreading that cost of $100 over that 10 years as the depreciation expenses which means each and every year you're telling the user that the asset value will be reduced by $10 it reflects the fact that the asset has been used for one year and no more than that and here you're showing how you use your asset or how many years that you use your asset to generate into revenue you've got the revenue, you've got the obligation to provide for the expenses and that's how you calculate the real profit in your business Next, unsold inventories. The inventories not yet sold to the final customer. 
And therefore, in your statement of profit or loss in calculating the cost of sales, and these inventories are not sold yet, and they should not be part of the cost of sales. And that's why you can see, because that's not sold yet, which means the expenses, there's not much with the corresponding revenue yet. And therefore, the money that I spent in purchasing those inventories, because they are not sold yet, there are no revenue to match against the cost of those inventories. And that's why in the cost of sales calculation, we have to remove the amount of unsold inventories, let's say $200, to reduce our cost of sales value down. And then put that $200 into the asset value, into the inventories value, because these $200, we may sell them at some point in the future, we can get the revenue, which is, which is more than $200 at some point in the future. And that's how we do it. And finally, the income tax estimate, the amount of taxes that we estimate or we project to pay to the tax authority. And um, because that we've consumed quite a lot of resources in the country to uh, generate into revenue, we should have the corresponding liability or the obligation to settle the amount of cash paid to the tax authority. So, because we've got right in the first place to earn revenue, that means profit, and therefore we have obligations to show the expenses in order to calculate the real profit in the business, and that's why we have to provide for the expenses as well as the corresponding tax liability uh, in our financial statements, even though the tax payment have not been made, have not been settled in cash by the business yet, but that does not really matter, because according to approvals concept, you've got the rights, you've got the obligation, you have to mix them all together, we have to match them all together in order to calculate the real profit in the business. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this section, and if you're interested in studying uh, accounting courses with me, please visit my website, and I look forward to seeing you then. Bye! APC Accounting for your future